Secure Ninja. Hey everyone, I'm Alicia Webb with Secure Ninja TV. Now, our free preview of Secure Ninja's online Sensei series has generated such a positive reaction that we've decided to give away every single module from this Cyber Kung Fu course featuring Larry Greenblatt, Tom Upjagrove, and me. If you like what you see and would like to experience a Secure Ninja training course in person at any of our training locations, we have some amazing time-sensitive specials for you. Just visit secureninja.com slash specials for all of the do not miss deals. And now here is your free module from Cyber Kung Fu for the Certified Ethical Hacker version 8. Enjoy! All right, module 16, the new domain, uh, hacking mobile platforms. Now, while it's still uh, very early in the development for the EC Council and us, we're all working, it's all kind of relatively new to us. Keep in mind that everything you've done on your PC is now available on your phone. Your phone has the camera built in, your phone has a microphone built in, and it's got a GPS. So consider botnets, right? How hard would it be to build a botnet uh, that says, all right, I want all the cameras and microphones turned on at this uh, latitude, latitude, and altitude. And so probably the biggest, um, I'd say, information security vector uh, risk we've ever known, ever known to man. Um, it is the new domain, still uh, in its infancy now. Right now, we're, we're focused primarily on Android, uh, iPhone, Windows uh, phones, and BlackBerry and I just considered my first smartphone. So um, up until, I admit this was about 2009, I believe, I get my, my first smartphone. It's an Android phone. And uh, my girlfriend uh, is living in uh, Florida and I'm living in, in uh, Pennsylvania. And she says, uh, calls me, oh, you got it. Okay, go, go to the, uh, uh, you know, to see if you're getting 4G. And I said, I don't know any of these words. You know, she's a hacker. And, uh, no, go to the back of the house. I'm looking at the uh, uh, the map. If you, oh yeah, yeah, I got I got two bars. Oh, okay, great. Now go to FCC Speed Check and download this app. Uh, I want I want you to see how fast you're going. I go, huh? She goes, oh my god, you're so stupid. Your friend, your, your students think you're smart. You're an idiot. Uh, I'll go to you. Go to Marketplace. Go to this. And I, okay, search for FCC. All right, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm so stupid. You know. All right, and then uh, install, and then it warns me. If I install this, it will have access to my network card. It will have access to my um, SD RAM card. It needs access to my GPS. And I'm sitting there going, why with a speed checker? I don't know, maybe, maybe. And then it needs access to my phone state and identity. I cannot imagine for the life of me why is, is something that's just going to tell me how quickly I'm getting round trip packets needs my phone state and identity. So I go, no. You go, oh, but all these things say that. You got to say yes or else. Well, uh, I'm not going to say yes. Oh, well, you won't be able to see how fast you're going. Well, then I'll live without not seeing that feature. You know, just because you can do something doesn't mean you should. Uh, it just seemed really risky to me. So she made fun of me. Oh, you're, a, you're, you're, you're um, uh, so paranoid. You security guys. But she's also, I say, quite the hacker. So um, normally she gets to go to Black Hat DEF CON. Uh, I, I'm the shark fest nerd. Um, we, we committed, but one year she was busy, so she, uh, she gets online and we're watching it. Uh, and a guy does a thing on the cell phone security. And apparently what happens is the SDKs, and he compared Android to uh, iPhone. And he says, um, that, uh, well, the SDKs that, that are there, the software development kits to make it easy for people to develop apps, have the features built in. Oh, okay. In Android, you can remove them. In iPhone, you can't. Hmm. But Apple contains that data. Android's out on the internet. So, uh -huh. uh, so then later on, I'm looking for a port scanner, and I found a port scanner that needed um, my network card, needed SD-RAM. Uh, didn't need GPS. Uh, didn't need phone state and identity. Another one needed uh, those two. It needed the um, uh, network and, and SDRAM, but it needed phone state and identity. He knew how to remove GPS. That made me more paranoid because now like, it, it's one thing when you just did the SDK and you left the defaults in there. It's another thing when you're smart enough to remove something. So I got really paranoid. Uh, so I installed it, just trusted it. Now, I, 
That's not drunk I was. Um, uh, actually, I've, I've uh, now in researching this, and I really thank the EC Council for bringing some of this stuff up. Um, there was one estimate where the non-Android uh, uh, app stores, they think at least 6,000 of the apps, and it may be because they give you free SDKs that are a little bit tweaked, uh, have Zeus botnet vulnerabilities in them. I mean, built not just vulnerabilities, Zeus exploit code in them. 6,000 different apps contain Zeus. That's, oh my gosh, if you're not familiar with Zeus, when we talk about botnets, it's the one that robs banks, all right? It's also available in BlackBerry. I, and they've had this for a couple of years. This isn't uh, new, it's just new to me. Uh, iPhone, uh, just as powerful. Now, right now, um, it, it seems that iPhone, they, they contain their data, but come on, you know it's going to happen. You know, it's, I mean, it's going to uh, leak. It's just like how TS networks drip off into secret and stuff like that, and Sipper and Nippernet. Uh, Windows phones have all your Windows vulnerabilities. So, uh, I mean, obviously, they're going to have, it's a microcode. It's an embedded version, but not too much cover on the, in the material yet. In fact, um, we don't even have VMs officially for any of this, but, uh, you know, Tom, Tom's come up with Android VMs. Uh, so rather than root your phone and have to play with some of these tools, uh, he, he's going to give you some guidance on Android VMs, and he's come up with a couple of nice hacks, and the Metasploit project's well on top of that. So it's not like Tom developed these hacks. He just, you know, correlated the data. It's so great stuff. All right, so... Um, you know, one great advantage or, or uh, improvement made recently is that we have at least started tracing these. So for the longest time, I know when there was a Microsoft vulnerability, uh, it was tracked at the MITRE database, right? And I, again, I like to use uh, NIST and NVD to get and query that uh, database, but they weren't doing that for phone hacks. Now they are. So just this morning, I, I Googled or I searched the uh, MITRE and there's already 349 known vulnerabilities and one of them just a couple days ago, right? And it's considered a high risk and this is just for Android. So, pretty scary. All right, so our attack vectors. I remember, uh, my, I, I'm an old guy. In the 80s, um, we thought you, you know, we were going to use your machine at home to remote access in, and I'd give you a disk with like, uh, we had a couple of remote access tools, um, whatever, there was uh, Carbon Copy, PC Anywhere. So, uh, but then uh, it got really nightmarish to try to support this thing. I'd give you instructions on how to install it, and then you'd have to bring your computer in because, like, you know, doctors are not going to follow this stuff. Salesmen don't follow this stuff. So we just said, you know what? We give you the machine. You brought it home. Your kid played on it, and now it's, it's broken, and I have to troubleshoot that. So we could, you know what? No more of that. Company blessed laptops. Company trusted configurations locked down with network access control and when you log in through 802.1x I quarantine you to a VLAN and, and I query that device and I make sure that it's got the latest patches and the latest virus signatures uh, before I even let you on the company VLAN. Be beautiful. And then um, VPs and uh, they get their, their iPads and they love it and, and they're used to iPads and Google and, and they don't want to come in and learn a new interface. They go, why can't you people make this work the way this does? Why do I need another device? So we've gone back to it and it's very tough now securing this. There has been some great developments uh, in, in some, uh, some management software, and we're going to see a quick thing at the end of this. Um, but again, the, the mobile app development kits come with all kinds of uh, features that you might not want, and it makes it easy to develop something, but the defaults are just bad. Um, I remember uh, uh, another thing that I, I, I could use my phone as a, a tether to, to get me internet access, right? It's 3G, it's awesome. But my provider wants me to spend extra for that. A bunch of people come out with uh, ways to do that, but you got to root your phone. Oh, I don't want to root my phone. Find one. Oh, they'll they'll do it. I believe it's easy tether. Oh, all you have to do is turn on debugging mode. And and I looked at it this way. I, I said, um, before I had to give my password to like uh, maybe I wanted to the electrician to come over to my house and he had to do work and I had to leave the key to the house. And I didn't like that. I didn't want to leave him the key to my house. And he's like, well, what are you going to do? I'll just put it under the mat. No, it's not secure. And I get an electrician who goes, don't worry. With our service, you will not need to do that. And I go, great. He goes, yeah, just leave the doors open. So that's debugging mode, guys. Avoid that. Uh, and this is the rough thing, because when they're telling us the labs and even some of the security software that looks really good on this, you actually have to break your phone. Jailbreaking is when you break out of the trusted OS and you get your own OS, because they're not going to give you root privileges. Uh, you, you might break it. I don't jailbreak my phones. I don't want to. I, I want my phone to work. But it, it's needed to get some of these great tools on there. So uh, 
I'll be playing with my next, I'll be following Tom's lead in, in these uh, VMs. And so that will work. So again, your virtual box environment, there's a number of free uh, Android VMs to play with things. All right. Uh, but look at that. Zeus Trojan affects Android and BlackBerry. And it's been going on for years. And this is robbing banks, guys. Uh, so mobile device management is the way that we're, we're it's, just, it's an open set of standards now, the way we can hopefully get more trust anyway, I'm not going to say totally trust, but better way to trust as people are doing our bring your own device and hopefully lock them down to, you know, the policies that we require. So uh, great initiative, we, we need to do it. Um, is anything watertight? Of course not. Uh, penetration testing, a great set of tools that they've recommended here. Uh, again, they seem to, re they, they do require that I either uh, debug or, or root my phone. So I'm not ready to do that just yet. Uh, Tom's been experimenting with these, um, but I'm looking forward to, to this uh, whole new uh, developing uh, platform. Because again, forget the laptop. There are people without running water that have phones. So whether as a victim or as an attacker, this is going to be the most prevalent device. All right, Alicia, I hope that scared the heck out of you, but also I hope it inspired you to want to defend yourself. Any questions? Yes, I do, actually. Um, are these mobile vulnerabilities only going to get worse? Uh, you know, quantitatively, that's really hard to say, but the Kirk and me goes, we will probably work it out really well eventually, but before we get to that point, it's gonna get really bad. Yes, I think it's gonna get really, really bad, and then we'll figure it out. So I think, you know, it's, it's always that ebb and flow. Right now, we're just discovering this stuff, and it's gonna get much, much worse, but I, I'm very optimistic that we'll, we'll manage it. We'll figure something out eventually. Now, would you say that these mobile devices are more vulnerable than desktops, laptops, or even servers? You know, originally I definitely would, was of that uh, mind because uh, when we look at the MITRE database, up until recently, they didn't publish those vulnerabilities. So I was like, gosh, if the vulnerability is there and I don't know it, how am I supposed to fix it? They've made great headways there. So I don't know if they're actually more vulnerable, but if you just look at how many are in use, right? So uh, again, I don't know the number of computers in use. I'd say it's a, a few hundred million at least, but there are, what, six or seven billion people on earth, and we think there's been uh, two or three billion mobile devices already. Mm -hmm. So just the fact that the threat surface is so vast. Right, all right, thank you, Larry. Oh, you're welcome. That's all for this model. Now we hope you've enjoyed this free module, but there's lots more. The Cyber Kung Fu course has 29 videos in all and will really help build you a solid understanding of the CEH version 8 curriculum. Don't forget, if you prefer to attend one of the Secure Ninja's courses in person at any of our training locations, you really need to visit secureninja.com slash specials for some amazing discounts and other deals. I'm Alicia Webb. Happy training. Secure Ninja TV is brought to you by SecureNinja.com, a world leader in cybersecurity training and certification. Our master instructors will help build you into a highly skilled and marketable security professional. Secure Ninja, forging cybersecurity experts.